Hello students, welcome to Diadme IS. I am Zeba, I am your faculty for management at Diadme IS. For today's session that we are going to be having, I am going to be taking your paper 2 and in paper 2 we are going to be taking the subject module of as you can see on your screen also production and operations management and in this particular subject we are going to be taking a very important topic considerably from a numerical point of view and that is stati statistical process control and specifically in this topic I am going to be explaining you P charts. Just a second. Right. So what I am going to be explaining today, today to you is P charts. Right. P charts have been there in your previous year papers so specifically I have I am going to focus your today's class on this. So the numericals are basically very simple. Once you understand the concepts, once you understand the way you have to approach this question. And believe me when I say this, your 15 or 10 mark questions or let's say sometimes 12 marks also are then for sure fixed. And as a UPSC aspirant, these questions create a good, uh, you know, uh, I would say a good niche over the others when it comes to the general, the way of attempting the paper. Since a numerical based question is usually, uh, it takes less time and it fetches you more marks. So it's actually a, I would say a good deal to attempt such questions and make sure that you have a sure shot of uh, securing of such uh, marks here. Because definitely you know in an optional paper, especially for subjects like management, ma numerical questions would be there and they would uh, add value only to your overall performance and even when the evaluator is checking your papers he or she knows that this child is well versed with the syllabus and is definitely definitely a good uh, aspirant in considerable to like the way you are approaching your answer writing right so let's begin our today's class student at Diadme IS, we have started the management optional uh, classes also so you are all welcome to join So as you can see all on your screen that I have included your um, previous year paper that is from the year 2022. From paper 2 especially this question had been asked. So this is basically as you can see the data that has been given. It is regarding the P charts. I am going to explain to you the control charts. Everything is going to be explained to you but specifically for today's class I am going to be focusing on the P charts. Right. So as you can see here this is the data that has been given. They have asked you to mention the characteristics so they have asked you to mention the characteristics of control charts which I'm going to be explaining to you in today's class also they have asked you specifically what is P charts these are 4-4 marker question and in continuation they have also asked you to calculate the average fraction defective the three sigma limits for the p-charts and to state whether process is in control. So what is process? What is this control that they are talking about? I'm going to explain to you. Right. So it's again a 12 marker question. So as you can see, it's a for sure shot. Your 20 marks becomes completely fixed. So you have them already in your bucket. Right. So then this is completely for you to secure and easy for you to secure. A student who knows this numerical very well and who has practiced can be very sure about it. Moving on, another uh, uh, similar question was asked from the year 2016. Uh, I have specifically included why because they, this is basically a um, theory based question and they have asked you what is statistic process control, how it is different from acceptance sampling. 
how what is acceptance acceptance sampling how is it different so you are going to draw a table and in a tabular form you are going to explain the difference it gives a good presentation for you as an a upsc aspirant and uh, like i always tell my students that attempting your so once you have you know cleared your prelims you are already you have filtered yourself from the other uh, students like other aspirants and when when you go for your optional paper or when you go for your mains there is definitely definitely uh, right at the the main focus comes out to be your answer writing because that is where it on a sheet of paper you are just delivering and you are just um, exemplifying yourself as a very very good um, aspirant to 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 be uh, become an officer la for later on in future so once you are writing your answers your presentation matters a lot so the way you are attempting your paper the answer writing the uh, approach that you are having the kind of control you have the kind of discipline you have everything so upsc is a journey we all know that and this journey is very much uh, becomes easy for you when you are doing you, know, you are following the right steps so definitely this question to be precise about it it comes out and there you can easily write down the answer and th later on they have even asked you that when is the process set to be out of control right so how can control charts be of use in identifying out of control process i'm going to explain to you that what uh, is basically a process and how it is considered to be out of control and all those uh, different parameters so um let's just begin our today's session i hope you have all seen the previous question paper i've just included two papers you can go ahead and, and in further classes when we'll be doing pyqs also we are going to be practice all the questions related to the statistical process control and the other uh, charts uh, you know they they actually act as a tool so let's just start our today's class quickly then so what is statistical process control so this word is basically made from three main keywords as you can see here on the board also statistical process and control any business organization in let's say which is uh, making products in context of let's say any dairy food product any organization that is working let's say mother dairy right so when mother dairy is making or manufacturing the packet of milk they have to have a very very good understanding of the fact that how the process of entire production on the line of management is very much in control they cannot opt for options or they cannot go by means of failure again and again because everything is at stake and the cash flow is at stake the competitive market is at stake overall management of resources is at stake so they have to be very very i would say very very disciplined in and analytical when it comes to the way the entire process is uh, going on so in the subject of production and operation management as an organization you are taught certain tools right those tools what why why they are very significant because they help you to utilize them and understand that when you are producing or you are making or manufacturing any product so during that course of time is there any defect because to identify the defect and regret later is something nobody or no manufacturing organization or no in general entrepreneur would really really like like to address in the real world so these are basically what is spc is spc is the application of the same tools to control some some same tools to control the process inputs in other words spc encompasses activities these are particular activities that monitor the processes in real time to prevent defects like i just told you also when somebody asks you what is spc it is basically a process or a way in which any defect is identified but the way the defect is identified is very very calculative by using certain tools what those tools are how these tools are implemented i am going to explain to you further now statistical process control principle let's read this paragraph and it's a very important paragraph let's read and understand it very carefully spc leverages statistical methods 
and sampling programs. Please emphasize on the word sampling programs to help plant managers understand and control variability in manufacturing. Again, a very important word, control. With the help of plant management software, right now we are in a digital age, so we have a lot of uh, such softwares available. With the help of plant management software, processes variations are displayed in real time charts. So we have a graphical representation of or the facts or the data that we have, and we represent them in a, uh, in, 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 in a form of a chart, and later on we plot it on the graphs, right? When a process deviates from the standard limits, so the, we have a certain, any manufacturing organization is, I would say, is comfortable to uh, run in set of two limits. It is basically the limits are, this is something that they cannot look, go below, or it is something that they cannot go above. So they have, they have to maintain that uh, balance in terms of identifying defects and correcting them as soon as possible. So it sets off an alert. This helps manufacturers better manage their lines and reduce rework and waste. So if their defects would always be there, and uh, the, when, when, if they are not identified at the right point and right time, it, the entire production team has to go back to square one and start the process again. And let's say in real time, we don't, no business organization is working on that leisure of uh, the cash flows, right? So the kind of time boundation that they have, the kind of environment, all those factors are very, very significant. So they have to make sure that they reduce this rework and there is absolutely no wastage of resources. These notifications allow them to step in and address issues promptly, quickly and promptly for sure, right? I hope you have understood what is statistical process control now in, uh, in, a, in a real sense. Moving on, process control tools and techniques. There are few different SPC methods used to improve and uh, improve yield and drive profits. One important tool is control limits. Like I just told you, control limits is basically in consideration of the lower control limit and the upper control limit, and in between the entire process of uh, production is controlled. When a process exceeds these limits, what happens if it goes above or goes below the uh, threshold that we have? Alerts can be triggered well before an actual specification limits are approached. As soon as the uh, as there is a uh, there's a there is an observant uh, in in consideration of that the lim you know the production department identifies that they have gone the process, entire process of production has gone above or beyond the upper control limit or, or gone very below the lower control limit. They quickly quickly try to. Uh, you know, uh, try to correct that fault or that uh, um, the, the reason. They go back to the drawing board and they correct those errors immediately and start proceeding with the way they are expecting their product to be of that standard, right? So what are, are the basically tools that are, they are, that are actually used? I'm going to explain to you in the further slides. But before going to that, let me just explain to you that why SPC is important. So you would be wondering, ma'am, why is basically SPC is, is so important? Why, what, is, what is the need of doing an SPC? Can't they just like go by, they already have set the standards, they already know the uh, course of action, or they already know, have, a, have a team of experts, then why is there so much, uh, you know, so much significance given to the SPC uh, tools and techniques? See, students. It allows you to identify issues at, as they occur and correct them. No organization is ready to put everything at stake, even in context of profits they want to make. So they have to be very, very clear about the fact to identify if there are any defects, even because at the end of the day, like I always tell you, there, there are chances of errors. Nobody's perfect. Even if somebody has been in the business for, let's say, a decade or more, they still have, there is, there is an absolute probability of er errors occurring, occurring. Right, so it is basically helps to correct them. It also lets you determine if a particular process is considered stable 
and gives you the insights needed to figure out if variations in the process are inherent or are caused by cer special circumstances. So like I just told you, they try to identify that what have been the components that have been leading to that defect um, scenario. So let's say there is an um, organization, let's say there is a steel plant industry which is producing pipes. So definitely there will be dimensions in terms of length and breadth, right? So let me just explain it to you. Okay, so let's say there is a pipe production company. So they have, let's say, a very uh, clear idea of having a machine that is making pipes. So there are thousands of pipes made every day. So even if the machine is actually making those pipes and the length and the breadth, sorry, the length and the radius or the diameter, the length of the pipe and the diameter, they are already decided before the production begins, they know the, for, for sure that this is like the absolute value of let's say 15 centimeter or let's say 5 centimeter that they are going to be taking for the pipes they are making. But this, these uh, dimensions that they have, the standardized dimensions they have, they would, even if they set it out in the machine and make sure that they, it is absolutely 15 or absolutely 5, but this is a machine, it would be running for like I would say for years, for hours and for so long. So there is a good, good chances of the wear and tear happening. It cannot be absolutely 15. Sometimes it would be 15, sometimes it would be 14.9 centimeter, sometimes it would be going to 14.8 centimeter. So the perfection level has to be decided that okay, this is the particular point and in terms of the process of production, we are ready to negotiate. But below that or, or above that, we are not, not going to have uh, any chances of defects occurring. Even for the, let's say for the diameter also, they can supposedly be okay with 4.9 centimeter. This is the uh, limit that they have set for the diameters as well. So definitely, definitely SPCs come into picture in such a scenario. I hope now you have understood why SPCs are so, so important in the context of production. Let's go back to the slides. Okay. Let me just now make you also understand what are the simple tools that we have, which we use under the SPC uh, situation. So as you can see on your slides also, that I have included all those tools that are considered as SPC tools. The first that I have included, which we are going to be studying today in detail, are the control charts. Control charts, basically, these are real-time monitors to show that a process changes over time via periodic samples. So what they do is, they take some samples, they cannot be checking out or uh, identifying defects on all of them. So they find out certain, or they pick out certain samples, and they start uh, applying those, um, I would say, uh, the values of X bar or mean charts and use to and calculate average values of sample sets. The, while X bar or R range charts display the sample size of the two to nine data points, an X bar S sigma chart is used for more than 10 data points. So they have a certain data points for which they consider and they've identified the sample and they start drawing the control charts. Then they have SPC control limits and run rules. Control limits may be used to alongside control charts to show a process anticipated upper and lower boundaries. Like I just told you, the control limits are set and they have the uh, very, very significant understanding. These limits are illustrated and how these limits are set it. So they are illustrated by the three sigma forming the six sigma range with the target in the middle. 
run rules determine when a process has drifted and is no longer stable so there are certain rules and certain criteria that they very much abide by to make sure that the process is very much in control then they also use histogram they also use histogram um these charts look at control and can be used to help manufacturer meets the customer specification because at the end of the day the products are being made in consideration of what the customer requirements are so the histograms are basically used for that they are used to analyze process variation are like in 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 context of the production is the product like going as expected or or not then we have cpk and ppk that is process capability measures and these are basically in, they indicate how well your process is conforming to the specification how much is it in alignment to the specification that they have that, will, that have already been set so sp and cpk allows you to look at the variability of the sample population within the standard deviation so you know there is no uh, there is also a way that i like i just told you to select the samples they are not selected arbitrarily so that is how cpk and ppk ppk sorry looks at the process capacity or capability right so let's quickly start our today's class and begin our main main topic for today's discussion that is control charts which i'm going to be explaining in detail today so control charts is basically student in uh, consider uh, they are the most important tool that are considered in the spc uh, you know as a spc statistical technique so it determines whether the output of a process conforms to the product or service design so definitely the kind of expectancy any manufacturer has in context of the way they want to design their product so is the product that they are manufacturing abiding by all those parameters and if, if it is not they immediately make sure that they stop the production or completely like go to the like i just told you correct it as soon as possible spc is implemented through control charts that are used to monitor the output of the process and indicate the presence of problems requiring future further actions control charts can be used to moni monitor process where output is measured either in context of variables or attributes it's an important point so you would be asking ma'am how do we actually use control charts what are the parameters for control charts so there are basically two parameters that are considered here in terms of monitoring and they are measured in context of variables and what in context of attributes what these two are i'm going to explain to you further a control chart let's see certain characteristics of control chart if somebody ask you what is a control chart so you have to know certain very important and significant characteristic for the same a control chart is a time order diagram like i just told you it is um, actually drawn in a real time sense so it is a time order diagram which is used to monitor a quality characteristics consisting of what it consist of what is this chart and what does it consist of first a nominal value or a central line and the average of several past samples it includes your nominal value or which you, we also i'll show it to you in the diagram also a central line or the main mean position that we have and the average of several past samples that they take then apart from that there are two control limits ucl and lcl upper control limit and lower control limit which helps to judge whether the action is required or not whether they have to stop the production we have to rectify the error what is the defect identifying that defect in, like uh, like i just told you resolving it as soon as possible the third point here is the data points each consisting of the average measure corrected from a sample taken process ordered initiative your sample only gives you a clear idea that okay like if you remember the pipes example that we just did on the board as soon as the value let's say from 14.9 or 14.8 goes to 14.5 so it clearly tells the production line or the people in the production department that okay this is the place as this is the sample which is showing a diversion from the limits that has been set so immediately when such a situation comes they have to correct it they have to stop the production rectify it and restart it 
so control charts are very very necessary in the in this kind of a scenario because they helps to uh, be calculated and the calculation are very very uh, precise so there are no chances of error further occurring once they have been corrected right so here is a diagram that i have included to just show you that how control charts are and how they look like so if you can see here on the x axis students we have taken sample numbers what these sample numbers are how they are like considered i'll explain to you further now on the y axis as you can see they have taken the number of occurrence if you remember the variables and the attributes concept that i was teaching you here is basically the plotting of those done if it is in context of variables or in context of attributes they are considered on the y axis so the number of occurrence of the times the defect has been occurring so this is how it is so if you see here clearly this is basically the line of the control limit the middle one this is the lower control limit this is the upper control limit we have a method or we have a proper standard formula by which we calculate lcl and ucl the mean is also calculated now during the entire process of production this graph or this these plotted points are undertaken these scattered points are undertaken and they are made sure that they just don't go below this lcl or much beyond ucl here in this diagram if you can clearly clearly see for lcl we are fine there is absolutely no problem but this particular point at the date of or the at the uh, x variable uh, point of 11 here it clearly bounces beyond the ucl so here we can clearly identify that there is a defect happening so immediately when such a situation arises the production team starts rectifying or correcting it right we are going to i'm i'm going to even to, in today's class be teaching you how to do, draw these uh, control charts we are going to be doing specifically p charts so yes we are going to be taking that today just have a look at this and just make sure that you can understand how these control charts are plotted let's move on to the next slide so control charts what are the purposes and what are the advantages of using a control chart first in this first box as you can see a control chart indicates whether the process is in control or out of control let's go back to the graph that we just were studying so here like i just told you at the point 11 in the sample that we have considered it completely goes beyond the ucl so now we can clearly clearly identify that the process is not in control so this graph give gives you clear idea that at what point in time your process is going out of control so you can immediately stop it there and you can rectify and come back it determines the process variability and detects variations taking place in the process so it can like i just told you the kind of variations that have been happening what are the how much in alignment the parameters are being followed everything is clearly clearly identified here using control charts 
it ensures the product quality level for sure the product quality level is maintained here very significantly because at the end of the day this quality of the product that you are manufacturing makes sure that the entire lifeline of your organization is going to last then it warns in time definitely since it's a real time diagram students you already know that it warns in time and if the process is rectified or at the same time scraps or percentage re rejection can be reduced so the amount of wastage scraps happening or the amount of wastage of resources can clearly be reduced very very easily here it provides information about the selection of the process and setting of the tolerance limits any uh, manufacturing or any production organization has to know the limits up to which it is ready to tolerate certain defects happening beyond that they they are not ready to afford it because they have other um, functions also happening so they just cannot make sure that again and again the defects are happening repeatedly and they are not rectifying it so the tolerance level is also uh, set by the control charts that they use now what are the types of control charts as i just told you clearly they are in consideration of two main aspects one is in consideration to the variables the other is in con consideration to the attributes right for variables if you are considering you are going to draw an x bar chart that's an uh, r chart x s chart for attributes if you are considering you can draw p charts you can draw np control charts you can draw c charts and like i just told you for today's specific class i am going to be teaching you p charts so please have a clear idea what these two categorization of control charts are and how they are made i am going to explain further to you so when your management paper comes in consideration to the answer writing these diagrams or these flow charts gives a good understanding to the examiner that you are very well versed with the topic so you can easily when you are once you are making your running notes you can include these charts so definitely they are going to give a uh, add value to your answer let's go to the understanding of what are these attributes or values that we just had seen in the previous uh, flow diagram so in quality can be controlled either through actual measurement right or through the attributes so actual um, when i talk about actual measurement it means to go into the depth so how much the quality control is being maintained they can be considered in aspect of two categories categories sorry one is the actual measurement where you goes into the weight length the dimension diameter weight everything right the length or through the attributes where you are either using like it's like yes or no accept or reject so either you are accepting the product or you are completely discarding it there is no in, nothing in between so attributes if the control charts that are considered in the attributes uh, criteria they are just uh, uh, they are, uh, they help to identify these kind of two situations but when the control charts are made in consideration to the variables then there there is a definitely a detail of all the dimensions so let's just see also the variable control chart involves the measurement of the job's dimension right and an item is accepted or rejected only if its dimensions are within or beyond the fixed tolerance limits whereas attributes so let's just let me just explain to you the variable control charts so if you are going by any organization is using variable control charts so make sure they are going to consider all the dimensions it's going to be very very detailed so if an organization prefers such kind of uh, pr control charts they are going to go by the variable control charts they, then they'll be using x bar charts r charts or s charts but if supposedly it is an organization is using the attribute control charts they are taking the uh, control charts based on the attribute so there they are going to only differentiate between a defective item without going into the measurements of its dimension 
they're just going to be plain simple going to identify okay this is a defective piece or this is not this is acceptable or this is rejectable right so once they are going by those norms they are going to be using the attribute charts which is either yes or no or accept or reject right clear variable charts are more detailed and contain more information compared to the attribute charts clearly with variable charts you have to go into the depths of the details for the attribute charts you don't need to go into that details you just need to have two extreme choice making attribute charts being based upon go or no go data require comparatively bigger sample okay so now what happens is you would be saying ma'am okay so it would be easy also but no even for the attribute control charts this is this is basically a very important point to note they considered a bigger sample for variable charts they do also con consider sample students but the size of samples for the attribute charts if you compare it is basically more in consideration of the samples that they take variable charts are relatively expensive why because of course there is a lot of details a lot of dimensions a lot of uh, extra information so they have greater cost required for collecting data and experts are definitely needed because for calculating or for putting all those and finding out all the dimension details and everything they need to have a very strong team of experts and the people who are well versed with the dynamics of production and the other details so they need to put in a lot of extra money resources cash flows and a lot of uh, i would say manpower also for finding out the variable using the variable charts so for today's class as i just told you we are going to be taking specifically p charts um let's start with the p charts so p chart is basically a commonly used control chart for attributes where whereby the quality characteristic is counted rather than measured so here the quality characteristics are basically counted and there is instead of measuring the those characteristics they are so this chart is used to control the general quality of the component parts it can be expressed in the fraction defective charts or percentage defective charts basically it is expressed in context of the defects like i told, told you there are, there are uh, in 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 aspects of either the fraction defective charts are used or so when you draw the control charts like i just told you on on the x axis you have the samples uh, that you have taken let's say there is a date there is a timeline and for the y axis for the y axis that you have specifically this one i'm talking about so they take those uh consideration of the fraction defects that are happening or the percentage of defects that are happening it is basically the fraction defects is multiplied into 100 and they use the percentage defective chart so they have the option of choosing this to be plotted on the y axis or using this to be drawn right so in consideration of that the uh, items are first class classified as, as good or bad so control charts why do we use it before i move on to the uh, this part of uh, this particular thing and we start with the formulas and everything let me just explain to you that why control charts other contr what contr other control charts are and what is specifically the p charts so basically before moving on to the p charts let me explain to you the other charts that we have so there are basically four types of control charts that ex exist on the attribute data one is the np chart now p chart is very popular to you and you know it about it right now then we have np chart np chart we have u chart and we have c chart apart from the p chart that we have so in consideration to the attribute value that you are taking to identify the and to control the process you have p charts you have np charts you have c charts and then you have u charts let me just put it here u charts right so what are np charts np charts is basically for the number of defectives they are basically used to identify the number of defectives u chart is basically to identify to be used as for to for the number of defects happening per unit like for every unit how many defects are been 
happening that's for the for that we use u chart c ch chart we use for the number of defects what are the number of defects that are happening in the production and the p chart plots the proportions of defective items let me go back to what are this pr proportion they are talking about p chart is one of the quality control charts it is used to access or assess trends and patterns in the counts of binary events whether it's pass or fail so it counts at the point that where this project is where where this product is pass as per the criteria or the standards that are set or it is failing so it is basically used there and p charts are used when the subgroups are not equal in size when the samples that are taken are not the subgroups are not equal in size and compute control limits based on the binomial distribution so control charts for attribute like i just told you in the previous thing also as per the binary distrib binomial distribution they are uh, uses the p chart to find out the percentage defective for the np charts we use binomial distribution and we try to have the np chart for the uh, number of defectives for the poison we use a poison distribution i'm going to explain or what is binomial distribution poison distribution later on in the other classes the c chart is basically to find out the number of defects the poison distribution is again uses in the u chart to find out the number of defects per unit this diagram is important make sure that you are well versed with this particular diagram so what are the assumptions of attribute charts for the p charts the probability of non conformance is the same for each item right there should be two events pass or fail and they are mutually exclusive they are different from each other each unit is independent of the other every time you are checking that it is pass or fail accepted or rejected it is separate the testing procedure should be the same for each lot definitely the testing procedure is same for the each lot that we are taking so i hope now you have understood clearly what p charts are you can just go back and read this uh, line once again so that this is basically a little bit easy for you to understand just read this clearly and then we are going to move on to the practical application of p charts So for today's class I'm going to be explaining to you p charts Right so when we talk about p charts we have certain standard formula for you which you are going to be using to find out the UCL and the LCL also the mean line that we had which i just showed you in the control chart diagram that is also calculated using a specific formula let's go back to the question that you had in your previous year but before moving on to that question let me just give you those formulas so that you know and you are you have learned your formulas basically for the upper control limit upper control limit how it is calculated we have a formula what is the formula it says as you can see on your screen also p bar plus 3 under root right please remember this formula everybody you can note it down also minus p bar whole upon right just a second upon n right so what the what basically this thing is n is basically the sample size
And if you see clearly, it is the sample size or the number of pieces inspected. Then for p bar, p bar is basically carried out, find out found by using a formula sigma a upon sigma b. And what this basically is, it is basically the total number of defective items divided by Okay, I'll just write it down there. Total number of defective items found divided by total number of pieces inspected. So the sum of the total number of pieces uh, is uh, taken into the consideration here. And therefore, the formula comes out to be p is equal to sigma b upon sigma a. So that's how the sum is happening here. Just see this formula. Right? So this is the basically the formula where, OK, this is 3. So this is how the upper control limit is calculated. We have the how, how the upper control limit is calculated, p bar plus 3 under root p bar into 1 minus p bar whole upon n, right? So as you can see it here also, n is the sample size or the number of pieces that are inspected every day. The sample size that is taken or the every day how many pieces are uh, inspected. How you calculate p? The p is calculated by using the total number of defective items found divided by the total number of pieces in inspected. For every uh, corresponding value, I'm going to show you that how you're going to be calculating the p so that you can plot the scattered points on your graph, right? But we also have a very clear understanding that we calculate the p for the mean value. I'll show that also to you. So we take the total of the sums of the defective uh, pieces and the number of pieces in inspected, and then we calculate this, right? So either it is done this way or even the p, so this is p bar is calculated this way, and this is calculated by using b upon a. Let's go back to the formula. Now, before I move on to that, we have, even if now if you're using the lower control limit, let's say if you now want to calculate the LCL, or the lower control limit, what you're going to do is, everything is going to be the same, nothing is going to change, only here, in this particular aspect, this mind plus is changed to minus sign. OK? Right. Just make sure that you know these formulas clearly. And you have learned those fo these formulas by heart. Because they are very important in the numerical that I'm going to show you and we are going to solve together today. Right. Let's move on to the question.
right these are these were just the formulas that we just discussed okay so i have included your previous year paper from the year 2022 and we are going to solve this question here only in, in today's class so now as you can all see here the basically so this is basically let me go just just go back to the question that we had mm. right so this is basically the uh, the chart that we have the clearly as you can see here also this is basically the number of pieces inspected this is the number of defective pieces found so here if i take by this uh, sample data that we have this is the date that has been taken this is the sample dates on which we have done the inspection and the defective pieces had been found so on 4th 5th 6th 7th 8th 10th 11th 12th 13th 14th right so on this particular dates these were the uh, particular sample so they took a sample pieces that how on 4th november they took 100 pieces and they found out that out of those 100 300 25 pieces were defective then on uh, subsequently followed by followed by 5th of november again 300 pieces were you know taken for the inspection and they found out 30 pieces to be defective then on 6th november again 300 and 35 pieces on 7th 8th then on they took a gap for like 9th November, then they've out identified as 35 defective pieces, 40, 30, 20. So if you see clearly students, what happens here is the values are repeating. So UPSC is very, very careful in context or that there is no time wastage. So you have to be very sharp when you are uh, very smart in, in context of solving. So once you have watched, solved this uh, particular value corresponding with the 25 defective pieces now you don't have to repeat it if the 25 value is repeating anywhere so you will, are going to use the same value so let's the, so there is absolutely uh, you know saving of time happening so let's start this thing and uh, proceed further so how you're going to solve this now these were the all total done so total number was here it's taken 10 then for the total number of pieces counted, counted it is 3000 it has all been added up and for the total number of defective pieces that have been counted it is 350 so here we call the number of pieces inspected as a please note that and this is basically the defective pieces that have been found out they are taken as b so let's go back to the diagram that we have and i'll going to solve on the same slide there only so you can easily see how we are going to solve that Okay, so basically this is in Hindi, so try to avoid that. But now you know, like this is the number of pieces inspected. Let me correct it also. Number of, I think I took it from the Hindi paper, but okay. Number of pieces inspected every day. And this is basically number of defective pieces found on that day right so and this is basically the date dinag is basically in hindi date clear so that's sorted so let's begin uh, the question that we have so as you can see here what you're going to use you're going to use the same data you clearly know that this is your a let me use another color here so this is basically um, Okay. This is your A, this is your B. So when you're solving this particular numerical using the P charts, you're going to be adding additional columns here, right? So how you're going to be uh, adding those additional columns? Let me just show it to you. So the first one here is going to be the fractions of 
defective items right or we also call it fraction defection right and here there is percentage of fraction defection now for every value like i just told you earlier also we are we are going to be use finding out the p the mean p is different that is going to be taken from these sums that we already have they have already given it to you in the question paper only that this is sum for a is uh, sigma a is basically this and sigma b is this this is basically going to be the the mean uh, control line that limit that we are going to have so that is sorted but for the individual values that we are having on the respective dates now we are going to be calculating the p so how this p is going to come here let me use another color here so that you know it clearly this p is calculated using the formula p is equal to b upon a can you see that all of you yes so i have uh, for the convenience of today's class i have taken the values i'll just going to be writing them down so that we don't waste our time today for that right so let's let me just write the values here so for p is equal to b upon a so it's basically 25 upon 300 this is going to be 30 upon 300 this is going to be 35 upon 300 because we already know b is this and a is this right then here we have Pandra minute. Bye. Forty upon three hundred. Forty-five upon three hundred. Thirty-five upon three hundred. Forty upon three hundred. Thirty upon three hundred. Twenty upon three hundred. And for the last, we have fifty upon three hundred. What are the values here that we have for this? it's basically 0.083 here then here we have 0.1 this is easy one then for 35 upon um, 300 we have 0.11 then for 40 upon 300 we already we have a value of 0.13 then you have 0.15 let me just write it clearly this is basically not showing nice yeah so yeah 0.13 and 35 you have already calculated so don't calculate it once again save your time because time is money in your answer writing right so yes 40 upon uh, 300 you have already calculated upon 3 this is also you have calculated 0.1 that is you can write it as 0.10 also then 20 upon 3 you have 0.06 then here you have like 50 upon uh, uh, 300 then again that is coming out to be 0.16 can you see that all of you yes okay so this is how it is going to be um let me just move on further and for the percentage is basically you are going to be multiplying it with 100 right so it comes out to be 8.3% so this comes out to be 10% this comes out to be 11% this comes out to be 13% this comes out to be 15% this comes out to be 11% again this comes out to be 13% this comes out to be 10% again and this comes out to be 0.06 into 60%
Okay, just a second. Sixteen person. Yes? Can you all see this? Yes? All right. So now, if you can see here cl clearly, we have completed our chart and we have completed the values that we have uh, corresponding to the different uh, sample dates that we have taken. Now we are going to be finding the UCL and the LCL and the sigma p, the mean p for the, uh, so this is basically going to help you in plotting the diagram. So today for the y-axis, I'm going to show you, we are, we are going to be taking this, these values. So the y-axis is sorted, the x-axis is sorted, right? But the lines or the UCL, LCL and the mean uh, line that we are going to have, we are going to calculate that. And that you are going to be calculating using the formula that we have. Right? Let's go back to the formula. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, solving the form with the formula here only, or let me use the another board for that thing. Go to the next slide. Yes, the third one. So how we are going to be calculating the? Let's calculate the LCL. But before that, let's find out the sigma p. Yeah. Or the, sorry, the p bar that we have. Just a second. How we are going to be calculating that? Uh, it's little. Let me just put a little. It's going quite above the height. So p bar. Yes. So now n here is basically clearly we know. Every day, 300 standard samples have been taken. So clearly, our n is 300 for sure. UPSC basically keeps the value of n same in all the uh, dates and if samples. So p is basically calculated using the sigma b and the sigma a. If you clearly remember, for the sigma b that we had the value, it was 350, the number of defective items, total number of defective items, right? And sigma a was the total number of samples taken every day. So they were all calculated all together and the value comes out to be 0 0.1166. So, but I'm going to be just rounding it off to 0 0.11. Let's take that thing, right? So now let me use the formula here for this. Now we have the main, uh, the, the middle uh, line, then that the value for that. Let me just use this. Okay, let's use this. The formula was basically P bar, if you remember, minus 3 whole P bar 1 minus P bar whole upon N, right? For the UCL we have, again, P bar, but here we use a plus sign, 3 under root P bar bracket 1 minus P bar whole upon N. Right? You can see that formula. Let's put on the values, students, and try to find out that. P bar that, that we just have calculated for the entire uh, summary of this numerical, it's 0 0.116 minus 3 under root of 0 0.116, 1 minus 0 0.116, upon n, that is a sample, 300. For your convenience, I have already solved that. So let me just put on the values now and uh, just, uh, you know, solve it clearly. So here you, you are going to be, this is the value that comes out to be 0 0.0552. If you subtract it, the value is going to be 0 0.06. So now you have clearly the lower control limit that you have. Now same you're going to be using here, this 0 0.116 plus 3 whole, 0 0.116, 1 minus 0 0.116, and the samples taken every day, this comes out to be this. Again, this value is going to be the same here, but we are going to be adding that value. So similarly here, 0 0.0552. And this value comes out to be 
0 0.172. So you can just take 0 0.17. So this is basically the upper control limit. So now you have the UCL also and the up, uh, like the UCL also and the LCL also. You have both the values and you have also the mean value for the uh, uh, you know the graph chart that we have. Let's just see this particular value and then I'm going to be drawing it. Today we are going, all going to draw that uh, graph and see whether this process is in control as per the data that we have been given. Right, so let me go to the next. Huh? Okay, let me just use the particular thing that we have calculated and try to draw the diagram that we have, graph diagram. So if you clearly remember, let's draw the, do the graphical representation. Graphical representation for the P chart. See, this is very, very important. Why? Because this is going to help you in finding out whether the process is in control or not. So here, like I just told you, here the sample is taken, the sample data. So sample date we are taking here. So let's put it, take it here. So what was the sample date, students? From 4 to 14, but we did not include it the ninth date, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, and so on, 14, right? And now for the sample, for the fraction defection that we had, if fraction, so because we are not taking the percentage defection, we are taking the fraction defection. Yes? So let's go back to the values of the fraction defection that we just calculated. Can you see this? 0 0.083, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, so this is basically 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.13, 0 0.15, and so on. Yes, so these are the values we are going to plot on the y-axis. Right, let me draw them also. Okay, this is, <coughs> now it's clear. Let me just put this away. All right, so yeah, I hope you can see this. So let's start with plotting of the values. Uh, so basically we have the values from zero point, let's start from 0 0.01, because our values go back to zero point, uh, the main UCL that we had was for 0 0.17, right? So when we have the value for 0 0.17, let's just take those values only, right? So let's start with, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 If you remember, the mean P that we had, it was at 0 0.12. Let's just go back and check also, so that we are not doing any mistake there. All right, let's to see that. The previous slide had our calculation, right? Let's just go to that one. Mm, okay, it was there in the notes. Uh, yes. Hmm. So we had it at 0 0.11. So let's just take it, I, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, uh, rounding it off. I'm just taking it 0 0.11 till two decimal places. Let's do that also, right? And the U, up UCL was 0 0.17, 0 0.06. Let's just plot these first and then let's just solve that. Right, so if you clearly remember, it was coming out to be the, the lower, let's, let's first draw the mean value. Or let, let's let's just take it as 0 0.12. Why don't we take it 0 0.12? Let's just take it there. I'm just right, let, let's round it off to 0 0.12. So this is the mean limit that you have. Can you see that? 
okay uh, i hope you guys can see that, that this is a little rough diagram because the board is some sort and i'm trying to get well versed with it so yes uh, try to understand it if you have any doubt you can ask me then and there and we'll correct it so the lcl that we just calculated student it is coming out to be 0 0.6 0.6 so lower control limit is here now for the upper control limit that we have calculated it it was 0.07 so it's somewhere high above at 0.07 this is your ucl can you see that okay now we are going to be drawing the scattered point now how they are going to be we are going to be checking that whether this process is in control or not the points the respective points for p that we calculated we are going to be using those plotted points of or scattered points here if by any means or how they come below the lcl or they go beyond ucl they are this process is going to be said that it has gone out of control and we can clearly identify using the sample date that when it is of where what was the date particular where it went out of control right so let's plot on the date 4 the value of p was coming out to be 0 0.08 so for p we have it here this is the point for fourth we have the value 0 0.10 okay yes 0 0.10 so let's go to 0 0.10 then for 6th we have 0 0.11 mm, it's going to be somewhere corresponding to this point then for 7th we had so for 7th we have 0 0.13 uh, For 8th November, we have it at 0 0.15. Then for 10th, we have it at 0 point again 11. Then for 11th of uh, November, we have it at 0 0.13. I'll just cross check it also, right? 0 0.13, it comes out to be 11th, right? Somewhere here. Then for 12th, it comes down to 0. Sorry, so it comes out to be again 0 0.10. For 12th, 0 0.10, where we have 0 0.10. For 12th, we have it here. Then for 11th, 13, sorry, sorry, yes, for 13, it comes down to the 0 0.06, which again are LCL. For 14th, it goes back high above to the UCL and it comes out to be 0 0.16. So I have to increase, so there it is, 0 0.16. So it comes out to be somewhere just below the UCL, just on the brink of going out of control. Let me cross check also it with the corresponding values that we have. Uh, for fourth, we have 0 0.08. Let me just cross check it. For fifth, we have 0 0.10. For uh, sixth, we have it at 0 0.11. For seventh, we are having it, it at 0 0.13. If yes, we are having it at 0 0.13. For eighth November, we are having it at 0 0.15. Yes. For 10th again we are having it at 0 0.11 okay then for 12th we have it at 0 0.13 okay for then we have it from 12th of November it is at 0 0.10 all right then for again 13 it goes to 0 0.06 the LCL and yes so we have the we have like very uh, successfully plotted, plotted all our points. So let's jo now join them and try to draw the line graph here. So it goes from 4th to 5th November, from 5th to 6th November, 6th to 7th November, 7th to 8th November, 10th November, 9th November, 10th, 11th November, 12th November, 13th and then it goes to here. So if you can clearly see the diagram is showing you that the control the process is definitely in control it just got saved on the date of 13th november 
and also it got saved just as you can see on 14 November also. So it, is, it has been going to the extreme. So clearly here you can say, you can plot this diagram, you can clearly sh write it down and explain the reason why the process is in control, like I just have mentioned it to you, right? Just go through this uh, question, try to practice it. There, are, there will be similar questions that we are going to be practicing. We are also going to pra be practicing the numericals based on the other charts or the other uh, specific numericals that come in the UPSE management optional. We are going to be doing a thorough practice of those al also. So this is definitely a very, very easy for you to secure the 12 marks very, very easily here. Just all you have to do is draw this diagram, use the right formula, do, you do the right calculation and you can, you're good to go for the same, right? So with this, let me just go back to our slides for today. Remember the formula, students? I have already told you this is the formula for the both of them that we are having for the UCL also and for the for the UCL also. I have to make sure that this is working. Okay, this is the UCL, this is the LCL, or the easy formula that I have mentioned to you. And you can find out the N bar, or N is basically, in UPSC, the N is definitely maintained as uh, this, the same value. They don't you know, want you to waste your time. But still, if it comes out, you know sigma N upon, the, uh, upon K. P bar is NP upon N that you already know, B upon A that you, we have just calculated. Where N is the number of, uh, where the sample size, and K is the number of lots. So all this will be mentioned to you if they are, you know, uh, according to the question or the data you have. So right. Okay, so with this we come to the end of our today's class discussion. As you can see here also, please remember that you have understood that how we have calculated the p-chart. First is, uh, let, let's do a quick division. What, are, what is statistical process control? Then we studied what are like the ways, what, are, what is basically a control chart, the tools basically that are used. So in specifically the, in the context of SPC that we did, uh, from the subject of your POM that we called it as production operation management. We did statistical process control. We did the, all the tools and te technique, sorry, the tech tools that we use in SPC. There is another term of SQC. I'm going to be explaining that also to you in another class. Then we did uh, the type of control charts and the two parameters under which those are considered. We did the attribute uh, charts. We did the variable charts also. We clearly now know the difference between the two. To in, in context of the attribute charts that we control charts that we have, we specifically did P charts today because that's an important chart and the previous year questions show that to you also. So now a question if comes in context of SPC control charts to check whether the process is in control using the P chart, you can clearly solve it and you can secure your marks, right? So keep practicing so that you get a good hold of these questions and if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Right? So let's end our today's class. Thank you.